My name is Alan Steinfeld, and my program is called New Realities. Each week, I go deep into the understanding of how we can start to change the planet, how new ideas can be presented to the world to unfold a greater civilization. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and welcome to YouTube. I've been doing my show, New Realities, for about 15 years. And what I'm trying to do is get an idea of a bigger picture that's going on in the consciousness movement. So I've interviewed people, healers and psychics and channels and wisdom teachers from all traditions. But in this YouTube series, I really want to focus on the masters of those specific areas. And so I have Paul Selig here today, who I think is, he's a master channel. And channeling for me, it was my introduction into the whole thing. I had a teacher who was a bleach blonde housewife by day, but this enlightened warrior from Atlantis at night. So, um, and in that, when I first met this channel, I had an experience of being more than my body. It's like my reality shifted. And in that moment, I awoke to who I really was, which was something beyond the physical realm. So, so I'm partial to channeling, and I've researched channeling, and channeling goes back to ancient times. The, the prophets of the Old Testament were channels. The oracle of Delphi were channels, and they were all channeling the divine wisdom. I think even the first theatrical productions, I know you were a teacher of theater, but I think even the earliest theater were people accessing the divine information in front of an audience. So with that, I wanted to really establish for new realities this foundation for channeling, and that's why I've asked Paul Selig to be here, because I find his teaching some of the highest on the planet. And for me, it's not just about the mystery of channeling and this non-local consciousness that comes through our our um, vehicle of receptivity, but you know that's one thing, the channel. But also, what the channel I saw said to me: Who's coming through that? Who are you? Who's coming through th that body? What? Where's that consciousness coming from? So, in today's show, I'd want to access these higher realms and talk about where we're going collectively. So, thanks for being here. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for having me. Of course. You're one of my favorites. We did an interview about five years ago. You were just starting to become public. Do you want to talk about just your progression a little bit from when you first started to hear voices and, and then where you started to go public and now where you are today? Sure. You know, I, I'm a college teacher. I've done that for many years. Uh -huh. And... Um, I studied a form of healing in my early 30s. It was the height of the AIDS epidemic in New York. It was a very messy time. And I had just sort of gone from this place of atheism um, into a place of believing that perhaps there was something much more. I'd had an experience of energy that was um, fairly distinct that left me seeing lights around people. So I studied healing as a way to get context for that. And then when I was working as a healer, um, sort of quietly, you know, when I wasn't teaching college or writing plays, which was my work then, um, I, I was developing. So when I had my hands on people, I found that I began to hear things for them, which was the beginning of clear audience. Mm -hmm. And then I did a group in my apartment for many years where I was, again, just sitting and being in the energy. But the, the, the language itself for me was always sort of secondary. I didn't really care about the words. I cared about the energy that would accompany the words because the energy itself was extremely palpable. And I was raised an atheist. So I needed to either, you know, feel it, see it, hear it. I needed to have something experiential. And I could feel that energy. Um, and that was the beginning of my channel groups. But I kept it very, very under the radar intentionally until my guides dictated their first book through me, which took about two weeks. It was called I Am The Word, which was the unedited transcript um, of, of, you know, I guess two and a half weeks of, of sittings. And then I became public. And that's when we met, right after the first book right. came out. And I helped you... You come did. into New York. You really did. And I was horrified <laughs> at every step of the way. 
you know, I've had to do this sort of kicking and screaming. I know you have, and hope. Are you used to it now? You know, I'm okay. used to it now. I'm still not always comprehending it. You know, but on that's many not, levels. It's not your job to comprehend, no, right? No, it's not. It's my job to show up and to be present and to allow what works through me to work mm. through me or with me. And I progress as well. So mm. I'm, I'm benefiting from this in, in, in many ways. Paul used to say, if I don't hear anything, I'll buy everyone pizza. You know, when, was, yeah. when we'd have a room full of people. So, but now I think you've sort of relaxed into it and trust these beings. Yeah, I do. I mean, they've delivered now four entire books through me yeah. that don't require any editing. I sit in the chair, I close my eyes, I put the recorder on and I talk, mm -hmm. you know, until they say that's the end for the day. And then the things get typed up and then, you know, thankfully Tarcher Penguin continues to publish the, the manuscript. So they haven't let me down yet. And I show up a lot. You know, my job has really been to show up and to be willing to show up. But I'm on this adventure too. You know, I don't say that I'm the expert here. Mm -hmm. And I'm very careful to say that I'm not. I'm the guy that sits in the chair. And as a result of continuing to do this, my own abilities, mm -hmm. my own empathic abilities, my own clairaudience has accelerated. I'm able to help people through these things. And you do help people. Mm -hmm. The thing that I'm interested in is the relationship you have with these guys from oh, yeah. your level. I'll talk to them about their level. You know, there's a vast unknown multiverse yeah. out there. How do you know who you're getting? For me, it's a familiarity yeah. to the energy and to the language and to the cadence mm -hmm. and how it comes. Mm -hmm. You know, some clear audience, I understand they're hearing a voice on the other side of the room and they're going, what the hell is that? My experience is highly telepathic. When I'm working as a psychic, I'm tuning into you and I'm actually hearing you. Or if you want to know about your girlfriend, I tune into your girlfriend, I start to resemble her, and then I hear her. That's telepathic. The difference is I'm tuning into others. You as a person. Personality. Me as a personality, yeah. the difference is when I'm channeling, the guides are tuning into me. Mm -hmm. So it's a feeling of, it's, it's essentially I'm the radio and, and I'm familiar with the broadcast. I'm familiar with the texture and the sound and the word choices. You know, a lot of channels, they disappear. They're not present. Some people say it's as if they die, but you're still present. You're in the back seat, aren't I'm you? I'm in the back seat of the car. Right. Usually saying, <laughs> where the hell you think you're driving me? <laughs> because I don't know what you're talking about. And I often do but interrupt. That's good, you know. It's, it's good and it's not good. On a level, the level that it's good is it allows me to inquire into the teachings as they're coming. Right. Because if something comes through me and I go, what the hell is this? Yeah. And I'm alarmed by it. In order for me to be able to continue, they'll probably have to address my alarm. Like, you know, there's, there's a place in the new book, where early in the book they say nothing is real, and I went, okay, I got, they unpacked that. Yeah. And then later they said everything is real, and I hit the ceiling, because I thought that they were contradicting themselves, and in fact they weren't. They were bringing through a gorgeous teaching mm -hmm. that I happened to get in the way of, and they had to sort of talk me down from the roof mm -hmm. for about four minutes of the new book, because I thought, okay, they're not making any sense. So the good news is I get to inquire. The bad news is, for me, yeah is that I get to inquire because in you a get way, in the way I get in the way but you see I don't get in a way that stops the teaching mm -hmm. and what I've been told by people who are familiar with the work or read the books is that my questioning is a help to them because it allows them to sort of have a sense of experience that you know I mean I'm a student in the class I know you also said you're not their best student either I'm not their best student <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Because I think in some ways, maybe because it's coming through me, which right. is what makes it challenging. You know? Yeah. You know, some of the funniest moments is when you're arguing with these guides in your head, like you're, they're saying he's getting in the way again, uh -huh. and, and, and you're sort of like having this internal like debate. I mean, they're very humorous. Well, yeah. I mean, not to me necessarily while it's <laughs> happening, but because it's always happening in front of people. You right. know, I mean, that's the challenge. You see, I can't access information. I can, I mean, I can be doing the dishes and talk to the guides, but if I don't like what I'm hearing, I'm going to focus on the dishes. Okay. When I'm in conversation with you or when I'm doing a workshop or, or dictating a book, there's an implicit contract that I'm going to show up and not stop. And part of that is, if there's something that's impeding me from going forward, mm -hmm. it's gonna to have to be addressed by them as well. And that's right. how we work together. The thing that I decided or we decided mm -hmm. 
at the very beginning of the first book was that nothing could be changed. So if I didn't like an idea, I couldn't make it pretty. I couldn't alter the language. The way it comes out of my mouth is the way it's published, and that's the deal. So... No, so before we get to the guides, because I want people to have an experience of that, do you feel like the relationship has gotten deeper? Are you trusting them more? I really am. I really am. And I trust, but like any any relationship, like when you're dating, you don't want to piss them off. When you're married, you don't care. And at this point... (laughs) We're in this together, you know? So, <laughs> so you're married now. We're pretty married now. But, you know, and also I'm more aware at times mm-hmm. when I'm Paul, how I become more them. Uh, you know, I'm aware of the gifts of the relationship, not just as the translator, but how at times, and this is mostly when I'm working with other people, you know, not when I'm walking down the street myself, although hopefully it'll get there too. I really do embody more what they're, what they're teaching. But yeah, it is a relationship, and it's a strange relationship. And um, This goes beyond same-sex marriage, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, yeah, it does, it has to. But I, I know what you're saying. It's not, it's a very, very odd experience. You see, anybody that's been a writer, I was a playwright, you know, the idea of hearing voices and, and rendering character right. was something that I understood. What I didn't realize that was that when I was tuning into people, I was really tuning into people. Yeah. And I didn't realize that until I was doing a reading for somebody and she gave me her father's name and then she gasped and I opened my eyes and I said, what's wrong? She said, you look just like him. Mm. And I realized that I was somatizing. It's a kind of physical mediumship. So the process of sort of engaging with this, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting one. And it requires trust. I think it requires trust from me and I hope from them too that I'll continue to show up. Well, you continue to show up and they'll continue to show up. So should we see who's showing up? <laughs> I guess so. No, because I have a lot of questions on their side because what they've done, it's sort of magical. They've brought through a really high quality teaching that have helped a lot of people. Mm-hmm. People have had awakenings. Right. They've had kundalini. They, they've totally changed who they were because they've read your books or heard your yeah. channelings. Yeah. And that's a beautiful gift you've given people. Oh, I haven't given them. I've been present for them. I've taken the time to type. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had to go and work through my own resistance to this. Right. Um, I have to deal with the teachings myself. There's mm-hmm. no way I can really avoid them. Mm-hmm. So even when I'm not living them as fully as I'd like, they're very present in my life. But, but you mentioned the effect that the book has on people, and I should mention this. Yeah. The books, you see, my guides work with energy. It's not just information. Mm-hmm. So when I do workshops, there's a very palpable energy that fills the room that people can actually feel. And I can only be so many places with them. The books can be wherever the books happen to be. And the guide said in the first book and in all of the subsequent books, the books are energetic attunements that work directly on the reader. Mm -hmm. So people are reading these books, and they say there's two books. There's the words in the page, which will give you an intellectual context for what you're experiencing. And there is the real book, which is, they say, encoded in a language. So people are reading the book, and if you go to Amazon and you read the reviews, people are saying, I'm reading the book and my body's vibrating, I'm reading the book and I'm seeing auras. You know, my favorites, I'm reading the book and my husband is changing. <laughs> I like that one. But that's what you're talking about. So right. there's a lot of phenomena attached to the books, which I'm grateful for. You know, it's true, because when I first got the first book, I Am the Word, I flipped through it a little bit, I didn't get anything, and then I sat down and read it from the first page, and it's like, wow, I'm feeling this vibration coming. But it wasn't happening just flipping through it. No. I sat down and read it from the first page to the last, and then there was the change. Yeah. I want to ask them how they do that. Choice, choice, choice. Well, they're saying choice, choice, choice. Yes, yes, yes. And I just said, do I have to say this now? And they're saying yes, yes, yes. So here's the scoop. When I channel, I whisper the words as they come and repeat them. So you're gonna, there's a repetition that's involved. It takes a little bit for people sometimes to get used to it. It's not extraordinarily graceful, but that seems to be how I work with. Sometimes when the energy is very, very high, it comes through direct and sometimes, and well, fairly frequently now with a bit of an accent, but that's how I channel. So if I do go into channel, and you're new or you haven't seen me before, this might be helpful information. So you go, what's this man doing saying everything twice and and, and turn it off? Because you hear it 
Oh, and the dictation is the whisper. Uh -huh. The whisper is the transmission itself, and then it's, it's almost like it fills me twice. Right. And now the whisper isn't loud enough to be heard in most cases. Mm -hmm. I'm mic now, mm -hmm. so it may be in this mm -hmm. space. Um, but the whisper is the transmission, the repetition is for the student, and as that's going, they're getting ready to deliver the next phrase. So what I'm really doing, you can imagine somebody sitting there reading ticker tape and really, really, really fast when I'm channeling, I don't know what the next phrase is going to be. I just know what I'm getting in that moment. And I'm just trying to keep right. up with it. I mean, it. I know I asked you on the first show, is it possible to get out of the way completely and just them have them mute? But when you're ready, I... I oh, you know, it's not even that, I think. Oh. And I think that there's a supposition sometimes. Mm -hmm. Somebody actually wrote me an email the other day saying, you really have to stop repeating this. And she, she said, and your guides have to really should stop using the word Christ because that's limiting your readership. And I thought, you know, since when are we packaging channeling to be convenient to people? <laughs> this is crazy as it is. It's just <laughs> nuts. If I were to choose the language for this, right. I wouldn't be channeling. And if I could control and make it pretty, I possibly wouldn't be a real channel. Right. Occasionally, I do watch people who they, they look like they're shopping at Bloomingdale's and channeling at the same time. And I go, they're either really, really far along and comfortable, mm -hmm. or they're just talking. For me, and maybe this is just the way that my central nervous system gets worked with, it's very, very physical. It's mm. a physical phenomena. I'm on my feet. When I'm on my feet, I don't walk like I normally walk. My right. arms are waving in the air. I talk in this funny accent. And I'm, if, if I were more present, I'd know to be mortified. <laughs> but I'm not because, thank goodness, I'm in the back seat of the car letting everything progress in its own way. Great. I'm really excited now uh, okay. to talk to our guides. <laughs> And they're saying, thank you for that. Now, what do you want to know? And they're saying, now, what do you want to know? And be kind. And they're saying, and be kind. The man before you is having a hard day. The man before you is having a hard day. No. So how are we going to do I, I want to talk to you uh -huh. there about your progression. When I first met Paul in the channel, it seemed uh -huh. like it was the beginning. And now there's a whole curriculum. Talk there's about more, there's, more, there's more than a curriculum. There's a way of being. There's a way of being and knowing the cells and knowing the cells outside of your prior agreements, outside of your prior agreements. And this is the issue here. And this is the issue here. Each one in this room, each one in this room has assumed who they are, has assumed who they are. They have an identity. And they have an identity that they've claimed that they have claimed and they seek to have reinforced. And they seek to have reinforced by everyone around them, by everyone around them. As you sit before us, as you sit before us, we see you as you are. We see you as you are, not as you think you are, not as you think you are, not as you wish to be, not as you wish to be, but as who you are, but as who you are, now the divine as you, now the divine as you, in each one of you you see, in each one of you you see is available to be known, is available to be known, and in that availability, and in that availability lies the teaching, lies the teaching, the agreement you make, the agreement you make on an individual level, on an individual level to access the divine self, to access the divine self as who you truly are, as who you truly are calls into being, calls into being the requirements of the teaching you need, the requirements of the teaching you need, and this is not individual teaching, and this is not an individual teaching, the requirements of the individual, the requirements of the individual are met with a grand teaching, are met with a grand teaching, we use the word grand, and we use the word grand with some intention, with some intention, our issuance, our issuance for you each, for you each bypasses the small self, bypasses is the small self that would seek to replicate itself, that would seek to replicate itself through who he has known himself as, through who he has known himself as, and that is the who, and that is the who, who is frightened of the world, who is frightened of the world, or angry at the one beside you, or angry at the one beside you, or has been lost, or has been lost to himself, to himself in an agreement to be lost, in an agreement to be lost. Yes, I guess. Do you understand? I yes? understand. I think this audience is really uh, an advantage advanced audience. I think they know they're not their personality self. So let's take it to another level. You're 
all think you're your personality self. You walk around the block. Don't I look lovely? Don't I look lovely? Will I get my needs met? Will I get my needs met? Who is that? Who is that? But the personality. But the personality. Now the divine says, may utilize the personality. May call forth through the May call forth through the personality. But he knows who he is. And he knows he is not. And he knows he is not the issues. The issues of the small self, of the small self, through the small frame, through the small frame. We will complete the sentence, please. We will complete the sentence, please. Then you may ask again. Then you may ask again. The requirement for the teaching you ask. The requirement for the teaching you ask. And what is the agenda? And what is the agenda? The agenda. The agenda is the incarnation. Is the incarnation. The embodiment. The embodiment of the divine self. Of the divine self through humankind, through humankind, not just you, not just you, not just the ones before us here, not just the ones before us here, but for each man, but for each man who may know himself, who may know himself in his true worth, in his true worth, her true worth, yes, her true worth, yes, mankind, mankind has been denied sovereignty, has been denied sovereignty by agreements made by agreements made to remain small, to remain small, and the small self, and the small self exists in limitation, exists in limitation. Do you understand this? Yes. Do you understand yes. this? Yes, we yes. move you beyond, we move you beyond limitation, beyond limitation, but you adhere to limitation, but you adhere to limitation. Don't I look nice today? Don't I look nice today? That is limitation. That is limitation, the divine as you, the divine as you, you who is remarkable, who is remarkable, ever beautiful, ever beautiful and always wise, and always wise knows that for a fact, knows that for a fact, does not seek affirmation, does not seek affirmation for his goods in the world, for his goods in the world, his actions in the world, his actions in the world, he has no need, he has no need, our discipline, our discipline is to offer you, is to offer you the elevation of consciousness, the elevation of consciousness that is required, that is required in attunement, Yes, in attunement, yes, for your embodiment, for your embodiment to progress, to progress. Thank you for the question. I think there is something different going on now where the true embodiment of the divine or the Christ self is allowed in ways that hasn't been possible before. Is that true? They're saying accurate and very accurate and very accurate and it will continue and it will continue in the face of your resistance, in the face of your resistance. Now when we use the term Christ, now when we use the term Christ, the term Christ, we must mean what it says. We must mean what it says and the Christ as we teach it and the Christ as we teach it, the aspect of the creator is the aspect of the creator, may be known as you, that may be known as you, the divine self, the divine self, may be known as you, that may be known in man manifestation all mankind in all mankind now the times you exist in now the times you exist in are vastly changing are vastly changing the requirements for change and the requirements for change are being brought to you are being brought to you in ways you may attend to in ways you may attend to and the requirements for change now and the requirements for change now are to align are to align to your own true selves to your own true through selves and not to create in fear and not to create in fear. You all create in fear. You all create in fear. You are instructed in fear. You are instructed in fear. You are taught to fear the one beside you. You are taught to fear the one beside you and those people over there and those people over there and all the governments of the world and all the governments of the world and you are cowards you see and you are cowards you see when you are fearful when you are fearful when you are a coward and when you are a coward you you are not acting in your divine worth. You are not acting in your divine worth, which is your true inheritance. The truth of who you are is courage, is courage, is being, is being, is an awareness, 
is in awareness of the vastness of the vastness of the divine as you of the divine as you these are the times you choose to stand in these are the times you choose to stand in now paul is in the background getting worried now paul is in the background getting worried you call them all cowards you call them all cowards time to go home, time to go home. there goes my life there goes my life we like the illustration we like the illustration because we are telling you what you are not because we are telling you what you are not you are not cowards you are not cowards you believe yourselves to be you believe yourselves to be as you go into an agreement as you go into an agreement with the world with a world that says be afraid that says be afraid and once you are cowards and once you are cowards you will seek protection you will seek protection will give away your authority you will give away your authority you will blame others and you will blame others for what occurs for what occurs when we teach you when we teach you we know who you are we know who you are beyond your creations beyond your creations of the small self of the small self we see you on your mastery we see you in your mastery and we lift you there and we lift you there as you say yes to it as you say yes to it thank you for the good question thank you for the very good question yes you're here to act in the truth of who we are yes. and stand in the courage of that how do we remind ourselves to do that when we forget when we get uh, influenced by others you must claim the teachings. You must know who you are. You must know who you are. I am not the one. I am not the one with the big bills to pay, with the big bills to pay, with the failing marriage, with the failing marriage. I am the divine being. I am the divine being who knows who he is, who knows who he is, and may live in expression of that, and may live in expression of that. The misidentification, the misidentification of your lives, of your lives. Lives we want here world through your material world is the challenge you face is the challenge you face you think it's all very real you think it's all very real it's not very real it's not very real it's a creation it's a creation that you are attending to that you are all attending to and in agreement about and in agreement about as you begin to claim your identity as you begin to claim your identity i know who i am i know who i am as a divine being as a divine being i know what i am i know what i am in this incarnation in this incarnation, I know how I serve. I know how I serve as I am most fully expressed, as I am most fully expressed as my divine self, as my divine self. You call into agreement. You call into an agreement through vibration, through vibration, that which you can be in accord with, that which you can be in accord with. And this challenges you. And this challenges you first and foremost, first and foremost, not to decide, not to decide through the small self, through the small self and the small frame she sees through, and the small frame she sees through, but to claim the divine self, but to claim the divine self as who you are, as who you are, and then call into being, and then call into being what he aligns to, what he aligns to, which is vastly greater, which is vastly greater. When you are frightened, you see. When you are frightened, you see you are the small self. You are the small self. Do you understand? this do you understand this the divine self the divine self as the truth of who you are as the truth of who you are is not afraid is not afraid because he cannot align to fear because he cannot align to fear he knows who he is he knows who he is we can only be who he can only be everything else is illusion everything else is illusion do you understand yes i understand because often in these groups we often say everyone i know who i am which is the embodiment of the divine in form. Correct. So would you suggest people say that so they know that? If you wish, yeah, you, may please. Words. you may say these words and you, repeat them after us, and you may repeat them after us. I know who I am. I know who I am. I know who I am. I know what I am. I know what I am. I know how I serve. I know how I serve. When you claim these words, you call yourself into present time. You call yourself into present time, which is the only time you may know anything. Do you understand that? 
do you understand that? You didn't know yesterday. You didn't know yesterday, and you're not going to know tomorrow. And you're not going to know tomorrow. You may know now. You may know now in this very moment, in this very moment, as you truly are, as you truly are, period, 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 period. So I think we're doing pretty good as a civilization. Many more people are awakening to this uh, sense of the divine self. Yes, they still have some frames to expand. But what do you see as the big picture here? Where are we going? It's up to you. It's up to you. You yeah. must understand this. You must understand this. We hold a vision for you, yes. We hold a vision for you, yes. We see you, remarkable selves. We see you in your remarkable selves, in the truth of who you are, in the truth of who you are. We know what you can be. We know what you can be when you align to your worth, when you align to your worth, and how that would best be demonstrated, and how that will best be demonstrated in manifestation, in manifestation, but you have choices to make. But you have choices to make, Paul is asking. Paul is asking, is it guaranteed? Is it guaranteed we reach this level of alignment? We reach this level of alignment. Yes, in fact, it is. Yes, in fact, it is. However, however, how you move through the resistance to it, how you move through the resistance to it, is in many ways your choice, is in many ways your choice. What's that is? Do you understand this? If somebody asks you, if somebody asks you, leave all your possessions behind, leave all your possessions behind and come follow me, and come follow me, you would walk away and wisely so. You would walk away and wisely so. Who is he to say these things to me? Who is he to say these things to me? I just bought a new television. I just bought a new television. I intend to enjoy it for a while. I intend to enjoy it for a while, but the truth of the matter is, but the truth of the matter is, at this level of agreement, at this level of agreement, you are doing this anyway. You are doing this anyway. You are releasing the need. You are releasing the need to be the small self, to be the small self, the ruler of the small kingdom, the ruler of the small kingdom, and that's what the small self is, and that is what the small self is, the small self. The small self rules the small kingdom, rules a small small kingdom, the divine self. The divine self knows where he exists, knows where he exists. It is not a plane, and it is another plane of availability, of availability to consciousness, to consciousness, the kingdom you see. The kingdom you see as we teach it, as we teach it, the true kingdom. The true kingdom is the awareness of the divine, is the awareness of the divine in all manifestation, in all manifestation. Do you understand this? Yeah. Do you understand this? That can be known now. That can be known now, but if you wish it. But if you wish it, you have to let go. You have to let go of who the hell you think you are. Of who the hell you think you are. Because who you think you are. Because who you think you are is a construct. Is a construct who you truly are. Who you truly are is a joyous, is a joyous divine creation. Divine creation seeking to be expressed. Seeking to be expressed in all aspects of a life. In all aspects of a life. Period, period, period. Yes, I get glimpses of that, and then I, I feel that expansion. And, you know, I think that's what's going on now. And we're um, moving collectively to that place. But why is it happening now? Is there a reason that a lot of people are awakening? You have no choice. Do you understand this? Do you understand this? Mankind has the means. Mankind has the means to destroy itself. To destroy itself. You stand at a juncture. You stand at a juncture of a reckoning. Of a reckoning. And what a reckoning is. And what a reckoning is. Is a facing of one's own creations. Is a facing of one's own creations. The belief in your separateness. The belief in your separateness from the creator. From the creator has expressed itself. Has expressed itself definitely, definitely in your belief, in your belief that you are separate, that you are separate from the ones beside you, from the ones beside you, and that is the cause of all war, and that is the cause of all war. Do you understand this? Do you understand this? If you think you are separate from the one beside you, if you think you are separate from the one beside you, if what he says doesn't matter, if what he says doesn't matter, what he believes should be ignored, what he believes should be ignored, you will assess him, you will assess him, you will judge him, you will judge him, and you will decide what he should be, and you will decide what he should be, as we have taught. As we have taught, you cannot be the light. You cannot be the light and hold 
hold another in darkness and hold another in darkness. It cannot be so. It cannot be so. These are the times you're standing. These are the times you're standing. As one man wakes up, as one man wakes up, he awakens a thousand more. He awakens a thousand more by his very presence, by his very presence, his expression, his expression, his field, his field on this plane, on this plane. That is what does the work. That is what does the work. Thank you for the good question. Thank you for the good question. Two more and then we'll take some from the audience. But um, I'm curious how you work. Have you been watching Paul? And that's one question. And then by reading the books, people are getting a vibration. How do you do that? How do you implant a... It's intoned in the language, it's encoding, it's encoding in the field of the book, in the field of the book, the vibration we operate through, the vibration that we operate through when we tend to pull, when we tend to pull can be transmitted, can be transmitted, the attunement of it, and the attunement of it in the texts, in the text serves as a surrogate, serves as a surrogate for the man before you, for the man before you, he will not be here one day, he will not be here one day he will be living elsewhere he will be living elsewhere attending to something else attending to something else but the text will be here but the text will be here in their impact in their impact and in their gifts and in their gifts now how do we work with paul now how do we work with paul with great patience with great <laughs> patience and deep love and deep love because we understand the dilemma because we understand the dilemma that is born in a manifestation that is born in a manifestation of realizing of realizing that who one is that who one is in fact in fact is not what he wished is not what he wished would have chosen, would have chosen, claimed, claimed, or decided upon, or decided upon the man you see before you in some ways, and the man you see before you in some ways, while this was agreed upon, while this was agreed upon prior to incarnation, yes, prior to incarnation, yes, was about to leave, was about to leave the life he knew, the life he knew when this came to pass, when this came to pass in many ways. In many ways, Spirit will use a crisis, spirit will use a crisis as an open doorway, as an open doorway, and we took the opportunity, and we took the opportunity to say, here we are, to say, here we are, let's get back to work, let's get back to work, and underline the word back, and underline the word back, because the relationship we hold, because the relationship we hold goes back a very long time, goes back a very long time. Now, the acquiescence, now the acquiescence to the teachings, to the teachings, to the teachings, to the teachings that we give, that we give are in agreement, are in agreement to all of you, to all of you only at the level, only at the level that you can hold, that you can hold. We can call you a peach. We can call you a peach, but you will not be a peach. But you will not be a peach. We can call you divine. We can call you divine, and you will always be divine. And you will always be divine, because that is who you are because that is the truth of who you are, whether or not you believe it or know it, whether or not you believe it or know it, that's who you all are. That's who you all are, but the agreement to that, but the agreement to that as who you are, as who you are, as you are expressed the lives you through. As you are expressed in the lives you exist through, in the lives you exist through, is a process of acclimation. Is a process of acclimation. This is true for all of you, and this is true for all of you. If you were to wake up in fullness tonight, if you were to wake up in fullness tonight, who you truly are, to who you truly are, you wouldn't know what the hell to do. You wouldn't know what the hell to do. You have to understand. You have to understand that you must hold. That you must hold the vibration. The vibration vibration to go into accord with it, to go into accord with it. This is the reason many of you, this is the reason many of you have a flash of expression, have a flash of expression. You say, where did it go? And then you say, where did it go? I saw everybody is beautiful. I saw everybody is beautiful just for a moment, just for a moment. You haven't held it yet. You haven't held it yet, and you will, so and you will. And how do we do, what's a hint, what's a suggestion of holding that vibration? Claiming the truth of who you are in the face of all challenge, in the face of all challenge, all things that would confirm, 
all things that would confirm that you are not divine, that you are not divine, are in fact the opportunities, are in fact the opportunities you require to claim it. You require to claim it. So many of you, so many of you decide that this is a pretty journey. Decide that this is a pretty journey. We'll all be very happy and spiritual. We will all be very happy and spiritual. You will go home and kick the dog. And then you will go home and kick <laughs> the dog or do whatever you did. Or do whatever you did the day prior. The day prior. This is not a convenient teaching. This is not a convenient teaching. It is not convenient. It is not convenient for lives you've created to the lives you create in an effort, in an effort to prove yourself as worthy, to prove yourself as worthy by somebody else's criteria, by somebody else's criteria. It is not convenient. And it is not in agreement to the person itself, to the personality self who wishes to rule, who wishes to rule the gift of kingdom, the gift of the kingdom, the true gift, the true gift gift is the awareness of the divine, is the awareness mm. of the divine as who you are, mm. as who you are, and as who everybody else is, and as who everybody else is, and we say everybody, and we say everybody regardless of what you think of them, regardless of what you think of them, they are just as likely, they are just as likely, likely to be the truth, to be the truth incarnate, incarnate as you are, mm. as you are, but you must understand but you must understand that the vibration you hold, that the vibration you hold is what you are demonstrating through, is what you are demonstrating through, period, period, period. So even if someone doesn't like me, I'm still the divine, right? <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> kidding. You are no matter what, and they are too, and they are too, and the fact of the matter is, and the fact of the matter is, when you are challenged by that, when you are challenged by that, you have the opportunity, and you have the opportunity to claim them in the divinity, to claim them in their divinity, you are truly progressing. You are truly right. progressing. That's how you learn. That's, that's how you that's learn. Good one. So even if, yeah, someone's nasty or angry, you have an argument, that's the work, that's the personal work to do in those moments, yes. Let me also ask you about the word. You have the book, I Am the Word, that you've written or channeled through. The word itself, word, word, you've energized that with a certain uh, vibration. Talk about that and talk about witnessing the other person in the word. The claim of the word is the claim of the divine truth, is the claim of the divine truth within the true self, within the true self, or the one before you, or the one before you, or in all you see before you, or in all you see before you, the word we say. The word we say is the action creator, is the action of the creator as manifested by you, as manifested by you. It is who you are. It is who you are, but it's the principle of the action. But it is the principle of the action of the divine, of of the divine, the creative force, if you like, the creative force, if you like, the attunement to the word, the attunement to the word, which we offer you in the first text, which we offer you in the first text is as follows, is as follows. You may repeat this after us, if you wish. You may repeat this after us, if you wish. I am word through my body. I am, I am word through my body. I am word through my body. Word, I am word. Word, I am word. I am word through my vibration. I am word through my vibration. Word, I am word. Word, I am word. I am word through my knowing of myself. I am word through my knowing of myself. As word. As word. Word, I am word. Word, I am word. Now when you claim these words, you are claiming truth. You are claiming truth when you claim I am word through my body. When you claim I am word through my body, you are setting the intention. You are setting the intention of the body you stand in, that the body you stand in, the physical form you hold, the physical form you hold is in agreement aligned with word, is in agreement and aligned with the word which is creation, which is the energy of the creation in action, you claim I'm with my vision. When you claim I am word through my vibration, you set the intention, you set the intention, the auric field, that the auric field, auric field that you hold, that you hold in agreement alignment, is in agreement and aligned with the vibration word, with the vibration of the word, the energy of the creator in action, the energy of the creator in action. I am word through my knowing of myself as word. I am word through my knowing of myself as word claims you in your true identity, claims you in your true identity, period. Word is the creator in action. When you say that word, you're saying 
I am the creator in action. It is the creator. It is the creative principle operating as and through you, operating as and through you. Your personality is not the word. Your personality is not the word. That is a misteaching. And that is a misteaching. You're all gods, it's been said. You're all gods, has been said, and that is the truth in one way. And that is the truth in one way because the aspect of God, because the aspect of God that we know as you, that may be no as you may be expressed through you, may be expressed through you and by you, and by you, but on a personality level. But on a personality level, you are not. You are not when you claim this. And when you claim this, you are claiming as the divine self. You are claiming as the divine self. What's the teaching? Do you understand the teaching? The kind? Say it differently, please. We will say this. We will say this. The divine as you. The divine as you is the expression. Is the expression. Expression, not you as the divine, not you as the divine. The small self is not divinated. The small self is not divinated. The divine self assumes. The divine self assumes. Period, period. Is that something you made up or created, you as these entities about the word? Absolutely, I mean, no, absolutely the, not. Oh. It has been here forever. It has been here forever. It's the truth of whoever it is. It is the truth of who everybody is. You can call it the logos. You can call it the logos. You can call it the Christ principle. You you can call it the Christ principle, you can call it God, you can call it God in action, in action, but it is here, but it is here, it is here as you, it is here as you, as you begin to know it, as you begin to know it, and not as you as you would like to be, perhaps, and not as you as you would like to be, perhaps, because that is still the because that is still the personality, assuming who she be, assuming who she should be. I will be divine today. I will be divine today, says the happy personality, says the happy personality. That is not this teaching. That is not this teaching. The divine operates as you. The divine operates as you, as you are expressed, as you are expressed, and in all areas of your life, and in all areas of your life, not just the ones you want to, not just the ones you want to, period. So when we have this divine self, is the personality still present on some level? Yes, 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 okay. yes, yes, yes. You still need to know whose shoes to put on in the morning. You still need to know whose shoes to put on in the morning to be taught. And you can be taught through aspects of personality, through aspects of personality. But it's not how you identify anymore. But it is not how you identify anymore. You see the personality. You see the personality self is an inherited structure. Is an inherited structure. Now we don't talk about your character. Now we are not talking about your character which lasts beyond a lifetime, which lasts beyond a lifetime in the personality. But the personality, I look good in blue. I look good in blue. I prefer my meat rare. I prefer my, my meat rare and I always like to live in such a place. And I always like to live in such and such a place. Our personality constructs are personality constructs. They are not who you are. They are not the truth of who you are. You've inherited these things. You've inherited these things. You've been instructed them. You've been in Instructed in them, and you've agreed to many teachings, and you've agreed to many teachings about what it means to be beautiful, about what it means to be beautiful or successful, or successful when you should aspire to, and what you should aspire to when you bought it lock, stock, and battle, and you bought it lock, stock, and battle, and there you go, and there you go. That aspect of the self, that aspect of the self that seeks to be improved, that seeks to be improved, is the small self, mm -hmm. is the small self, the divine self knows, the divine self knows who he is, who he is, and calls into manifestation, and calls into manifestation what he requires, what he requires to grow through, to grow through, period, period. Okay, one more question, and then we'll talk to the audience. Once we get there, I don't, uh, I mean, being the embodiment of this divine self, whenever that will be, I know it will probably take some time, what will the planet look like when everyone is the manifestation of that divine awareness. How do you see us then? The fact of the matter is it has already happened. It has already happened in a higher dimension. In a higher dimension, you haven't aligned to it yet. You haven't aligned to it yet. And that is the progress we are seeing now. And that is the progress we are seeing now. Now the divine as you. Now the divine as you is implicit is implicit in every manifested being. In every manifested being, you cannot be here. You cannot be here incarnated. Incarnated and not be an aspect of God and not be an aspect of God. It's simply not possible. It's simply not 
possible so it already exists so it already exists but the awakening to the truth of who you are but the awakening to the truth of who you are of who you are happens in pockets happens in pockets and then very quickly and then very quickly as mankind begins to remember as mankind begins to remember who the hell he's always been who the hell he's always been outside of the artifice outside of the artifice and the creations and the creations of the small self of the small self period period but our whole culture changes and everything is different at that point that we live at that place everything can be everything can be as it moves into agreement as it moves into agreement with truth with truth yes it can be yes it can be but you have choice but you have choice you have free will you have free will and you will not be dragged by your hair and you will not be dragged by your hair to the altar and the altar we say is where you release is where you release who you think you are who you think you are to reclaim your own truth to reclaim your own truth. You have been gifted with choice. You have been gifted with choice. How does the world look, you may ask? How does the world look, you may ask? It looks like the world you know now. It looks like the world you know now without fear, without fear, without people deciding in fear, without people deciding in fear. And the reason you have war, and the reason you have war, the reason you have poverty, the reason you have poverty, the reason it is injustice, that is, and that is injustice, is all born in fear, is all born in fear. So think about it. So think about it, and you will see, and you will see how the world may change, how the world may change. Oh, I think it's a great possibility. So don't go anywhere. I'm just going to take some questions. <laughs> okay, does anybody here, we can, if anyone has a question, come, open up. Are you having fun? Yes, okay. very much so. Is this new for you? Uh, well, I have attended okay. two uh, workshops and been very impressed. Uh, Hello. So I have to say thank you. Thank you. For bringing this to us. I have a question uh, about twin flame relationships. Uh huh. And if you uh, familiar with the concept? Yes and no, but in many ways. But in many ways, the concept itself, the concept itself is born in personality, is born in personality and a desire for union, and a desire for union that is also born in personality, that is also born in personality in many ways. In many ways, when you have a construct, when you have a construct that has been shared, that has been shared, you make it very real. You make it very real, and then you inquire about it, and then you inquire about it. You're saying be as you are. This is the important thing. This is the important thing to understand. You may get caught up. You may get caught up in the glamour, in the glamour of experience, of experience, and you may get attached. And you may get attached to the labels people use, to the labels people use to describe phenomena, to describe phenomena, but the reality is. But the reality is what you are speaking to, what you are speaking to is an awareness, is an awareness of your own divinity, of your own divinity, and consequently, and consequently the divine in what you see, the divine in what you see, that is your blessing. That is your blessing now when you operate at that level. Now when you operate at that level, you call it manifestation, you call into manifestation what you require, what you require when we claim the words. When we claim the words, I know how I serve, I know how I serve, and that is used by you. And that is used by you, it does not mean, it does not mean you need to go hunting for service. You need to go hunting for service. It means you are claiming. It means you are claiming your alignment, your alignment, what you require to serve through, and what you require to serve through will be called into being, will be called into being, because that becomes your expression, because that becomes your expression. You all understand this, yes? Do you all understand this? Yes, you don't have to go seeking. You don't have to go seeking because it's there for you to know, because it's there for you to know, yes, if you wish. They just said, I just asked, this is Paul, I just asked if I could tune into you because that's how I do progress. Can I have your name? Is that okay? Aliona. Let me just see if I can get you. Well, you're, you seem okay. I mean, you hold yourself well. I'm okay. You know, the funny thing is when I tune into you, you're still surveying everything. This is how you come through, like you're checking it all out. It's a little cocky right now, which isn't bad. Like, I got it, I got it, I got it. And I think that'll settle in, because it's not about, I got it. You know what I mean? It's what they said at the beginning. It's about how we be, how we are, how we be at this level of expression 
is the demonstration of the teaching. Thank you. Anybody else? Question? Judith, did you have a question? Here, go, go, just come in the light. Stand in the light. No, you're in the light now. Judith, Judith Kahn, an old friend of mine. Do you know why the guides chose you? Have you asked or have they made that clear? Choice, choice, choice. Well, they're, they're saying choice, 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 which was something they say often, and they're pointing to me. So I guess on, on a level I chose it. Yes, and yes, yes. And they're saying, and yes, and beyond that, and beyond that, you decide with him. This is what, what I've gotten from this, and they actually, for the first time, start to address my relationship to them in the newest book. In a chapter where I was like, I, this is just too nuts, and they said, okay, they switched the subject, and they started talking to me directly about some of this stuff. But they say that this was something that I agreed to prior to incarnation. Oh, that's it really. It seemed like there was a prior car, uh, contract. It, that's is what. what you that's to. yeah. That's how they. They. I mean, contract's not a word that they use. They use. They use agreements. Mm -hmm. Contract isn't a word. They're not big on contracts. But they said that it was agreed to, and they say, you know, I'm sort of operating as an aspect of them, and that that's part of the connection. So I sort of I volunteered, in other words, for some reason to and do who this are work. They? They call themselves teachers. They call them, so I call them the guides. The only reason they're called the guides is because my ex used to say, ask the guides this, ask the guides that, and that's how they got the name. Lately, they've begun claiming a name. I mean, they've been doing it for years, actually, but they do this when they wish to, and not always when asked. And we will do it now, and we will do it now. You may claim Melchizedek if you wish. They're saying you may claim Melchizedek if you wish. That is the name we will use. That is the name we will use in consort with a great light, in consort with a great light and a true teaching, and a true teaching. The Christ as man. The Christ as man has always been this teaching, has always been this teaching. This is not a new teaching. This is not a new teaching. The methodology we offer you to support you, to support you in this commission, in this commission, commission has been transferred to you, has been transferred to you at this time, at this time for a reason, for a reason. We are here to see you through it, and we are here to see you through it, period, period. They're saying period. Thank you. Nicole. It's Nicole's first time seeing you. <laughs> it's been great. I want to go back to fear. So taking it through more of a practical application through the day when something comes up, is it just a matter of loving it and looking at it and saying, like, I love you and you're not real fear? Yes, yes and no, if that's the way you want to talk to it. If that's the way you want to talk to it, you may talk to it any way you like. You may talk to it any way you like. You don't have to talk to it at all. You don't have to talk to it at all. You have to realize. You have to realize that when you are facing fear, that when you are facing fear, you are facing a belief. You are facing a belief that seeks to invite you forward, that seeks to invite you forward to join it to join it, loving your fear. Loving your fear may not be very good, may not be very good when you are terrified out of your mind. When you are terrified out of your mind, when you are terrified out of your mind, when you are terrified out of your mind, perhaps what one needs to do, perhaps what one needs to do is realize their true safety, is realize their true safety, and the true safety we say. And the true safety, we say, we say is claimed by you, is claimed by you in an awareness of divinity, and in a awareness of divinity, all you can be frightened of, all you can be frightened of is something in this dimension, is something in this dimension. Do you understand that? Do you understand this? You think you're your bodies. You think you're your bodies or your fear demise. So you fear demise. You'll all be dead one day. You'll all be dead one day. That is how the body works. That is how the body works. We're no longer afraid of death. When you are no longer afraid of death, 40% of your fears, 40% of your fears leave you entirely leave you entirely the violation, the violation of the self, of the self by fear. By fear is a very insidious one, is a very insidious one, the replication of fear. The replication of fear is the issue, is the issue, and as we have told you before, and as we have told you before, the action of fear. The action of fear is to claim more fear, is to claim more fear. Do you understand this? Do you understand this, the action of fear? The action of fear is to call more fear to itself, is to call more fear to itself, and that is how you live your life then. And that is how you live your life then, in agreement to fear. In agreement to fear, say thank you, no. Say thank you, no, to the fear you see. To the fear you see, don't engage it. 
Don't engage it. Know that it's a liar. Know that it's a liar. Paul has the belief. Paul has a belief that his fear will protect him, that his fear will protect him. It gives him a reason. It gives him a reason to hold on to fear, to hold on to fear. The fear has not protected him. The fear has not protected him. It's kept him in isolation. And that's a very different thing. Do you understand? Yes. Do you understand? Yes. I understand. I'm just, my mind is taking me to the fear of financial prosperity. Because you're looking to yourself as the source of your income, as the source of your income when you realize the source of all things. When you realize the source of all things, you become the beneficiary of it. You become the beneficiary of it, those of you who think. Those of you who think that your creations, that your creations will save you, will save you, will be disappointed one day, will be disappointed one day because they cannot, because they they cannot. Here is the truth. Here is the truth. You must know who you are. You must know who you are in your own divine worth, in your own divine worth. When the teaching was said, when the teaching was said, seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, and all things will be added, and all things will be added. You are being instructed. You are being instructed to realize the divine, to realize the divine as the infinite source, as the infinite source that all things come from, that all things come from if you believe that your marriage if you believe that your marriage is the source of your love is the source of your love or your job or your job is the source of your security is the source of your security we very disappointed you will be very disappointed when the job is gone when the job is gone and the marriage is ended and the marriage is ended you understand when you understand the truth of all things the truth of all things this fear goes away this fear goes away so let me just ask you what you need at a higher level Level. I need to forgive myself for not knowing how it's going to work out. This is the answer. You just said it. I need to forgive myself for not knowing how this is going to work out because I just don't know. I just don't know. And that lets you off the hook. And that lets you off the hook to begin to call things to you again. Do you understand? So just let go. Let go of the, let go of the, let go of the unforgiveness of the self who has to control it, who has to control it. All you can do is show up. All you can do is show up, is what they're saying, and be present, and be present, and realize the divine, and realize the divine in the creation you make, in the creation you make, period, 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 period. Thank you. All right. How are you doing? I'm okay. Do you enjoy channeling? Yeah, I do. They're feisty today. They're feisty? They, they get a little indignant sometimes, but I think that's for effect. And it's but, not, and not out of any malice. But I do want to ask them one final question. If it's that simple, just giving up our fear, being our divine self. We would like to say this, to know the self as the master. To know the self as the master is to know the self outside of expectations. Is to know the self outside of expectations, inherited expectations, inherited expectations, and fear-based expectations, and fear-based expectations. To know the self as the master. To know the self as the master is to know who you can claim. Is to know who you can claim the true self to be, the true self to be, and what purpose that aspect of itself and what purview that aspect of the self has in this world has in this world the divine as you the divine as you is here to be sung is here to be sung and will be sung and will be sung and the song the divine self sings and the song the divine self sings calls into manifestation calls into manifestation the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of heaven that is the truth of who you are that is the truth of who you are and that is what master knows and that is what the master knows we teach to the master you see we teach to the master you see because that is the truth of who you are because that is the truth of who you are period 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 have you guys been incarnated here and learned this on your own or yes and no yes and no some and some not some and some not, period, period, period. So any final words for our group here um, as far as uplifting the energy and having us leave with some higher vibration? Ask them each to stand up if they would. Would they all yes. stand up? Would they all stand up and look at the ones around them? And look at the ones around them. The ones around them have come to be seen. The ones around them have come to be seen, to be witnessed as they are, to be witnessed as they are. And there's no one in this room. And there is no one in this room who is unworthy of the divine, who is unworthy of the divine. There is nobody watching this. There is nobody watching this who could be unworthy of the divine, who could be unworthy of the divine, regardless of what they believe, regardless of what they believe. Would you say this after us, please? Would you say this after us, please? I know who I am. I know who I am. I know what I am. I know what I am. I know how I serve. I know how I serve. I am here. 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 I am here.
the claim I am here, it is a claim of the divine self, is the claim of the divine self, teaching and speaking, teaching and speaking, resurrected if you wish, resurrected if you wish as you, as you, and we will say this to each of you, and we will say this to each of you, you are here, 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 and we thank you each for your presence, good night. We thank you each for your presence, good night, period, period. That's from them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you all for coming. Thanks for watching New Realities. This is Alan Steinfeld. I've been talking to Paul Selig and his guides about expanding to the next level of consciousness. And I hope you've gotten something from this program. If you want to reach me, go to my website, newrealities.com. Or you can go to Paul's website, paulselig.com. He has events and personal readings and groups and online courses, which are amazing. And of course, his books. I Am The Word, the book of love and creation, and the book of knowing and worth, and the book of mastery coming out. Thanks, and this has been fun. And thank you all for being here.